It's hard to resist the blue tick coon hound. First thing I think of when I think of a blue tick coon hound is goofy. <laughs> Blue tick coon hounds sort of have a dopey, lovable look to their face. They have long lips on a long muzzle and long floppy ears and those droopy, dreamy eyes. But don't be fooled by their charming appearance, because in reality, they're not clumsy by any stretch of the imagination. Neil Young's song, Old King, is a tribute to his once beloved blue tick, Elvis. And in the novel, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, a blue tick coon hound is used as a symbol for the character Chief Bromden. These coon hounds are seen in Tennessee, you know, Mississippi, Louisiana. That's the big hunting area. So where does this hound come from? The South, of course. Believed to have originated in Louisiana, the blue tick likely descended from the Grand Blue de Gascon and the English Foxhound. The resulting dog was known as the English Coon Hound, which came with either blue or red ticking. Hunters like the blue tick dogs for their ability to follow a cold trail and for their endurance. They officially gave them the name blue tick in honor of their appearance, and today it's a breed all its own. The coon in Coon Hound refers to the breed's ability to track and tree raccoons. Dogs can smell 100,000 times better than human beings. I would put blue tick coon hounds at the top of the list. The blue tick is a cold nose scent hound, which means they have the ability to track older scents that may have a weaker or cold trail. So what do blue ticks do when they pick up the scent of their prey? All hounds have a tendency to oh. And each blue tick is born with its own unique howl, allowing a hunter to recognize their dog from far away. The best way to spot a blue tick is the blue ticking. Within the breed standard, the more ticking that a blue tick coonhound has, the more desirable. The blue tick has thin, long ears that reach the tip of its nose when pulled forward. The hills of Tennessee are the perfect home for a blue tick hound. That's where Earl Hudson keeps his blue tick, Smokey. Smokey is such a great pet because he's a lover. At home, this nine-year-old is comfy laying in the sun in Earl's backyard. Smokey has a wonderful life, and he has three dog houses. He can sleep in his chores. But Smokey is not your typical couch potato because three weekends a month, Smokey lives a double life. These two young men have come to pick up Smokey to take him to his second home. It's the campus of the University of Tennessee, where Smokey reigns as one of the most famous college mascots. Smokey is more than a mascot. He's the pride of Tennessee. The University of Tennessee has had Smokey as our mascot since 1953, and we wouldn't have it any other way. When there's a game, Smokey's new buds are Robert Moser and Trey McAdams of the Alpha Gamma Rho fraternity. They're responsible for the big dog on campus. It's their job to feed and house Smokey for his weekend responsibilities and make sure that he has access to his fans. I love Smokey! Smokey's like a brother to me, and he'll be a lifelong friend. I love Smokey because he's my pet, he's my friend, uh, he's like my brother. But it's at the Tennessee Volunteer Games where Smokey steals the show. When Smokey runs onto the field, the UT fans know it's game time. Smokey is the Vols' biggest cheerleader. When the home team scores, Smokey runs back and forth in the end zone and does what a good blue tick hound was bred for. Smokey sounds pretty loud at the game. It's long and it's kind of raspy, kind of like... One of the fans who can recognize Smokey's howl is his proud papa, Earl, who's always in the stands. I am so proud to own Smokey. He gives me incredible pride. After the game, what does any self-respecting college student do? Go to a frat party, of course. And that's where you'll find Smokey, hanging out by the food and helping his buddies make connections. I would say Smokey does help with my social life. I'm single, so he definitely helps a little bit with the ladies. And when the party's over, it's time to crash in the dorm. After the game, Smokey is exhausted. He gets on the couch and stays there all night. 
Monday morning, it's off to classes for Robert and Trey, and for Smokey, it's back home to Earl. Another win for the volunteers, and another weekend at school for Smokey. Where is it? Where is it? Not all blue ticks live in the city and the country, but this breed would prefer a large, open, fenced-in space. Definitely not an apartment dog. You would have the police coming over, I think, a lot. <laughs> They're generally healthy, but some dogs develop cataracts and hip dysplasia. The blue tick's short, glossy coat is very low maintenance. And as far as training, blue ticks are smart, yet easily distracted by their nose. Athletic, loud, and determined, blue ticks are working dogs that need an active, loving family. Yeah. In general, the blue tick is best suited to live in a place with space. They are pretty healthy, but can have some problems such as cataracts and hip dysplasia. Maintaining their coat requires minimal care, yet training sometimes requires a little extra TLC. And overall, the blue tick can be a great pet and worker that loves to be part of an active family. When Dogs 101 comes back, does this dog know the best treatment for arthritis? What does this breed and Santa have in common? Here's a hint, Rudolph is involved. This dog inspired a brand of vodka. He's not ugly. And this dog was the favorite of Mary Tyler Moore. 